So uh, it's um, 5.42, it's uh, Tuesday, the 1st of February, and this is the public safety meeting. Um, and my apologies for the barking dog in the background. Um, so the first item I believe on the agenda is probably the agenda. Um, and I would, just for just for everyone's reference, so that um, in the and those who might be participating, um, that are public members may be participating, um, is that this is the public safety committee. The members of the public safety committee are myself, um, Karen Paul Ward Six, and then uh, the other two members are Councillors Hightower and Stromberg in wards one and eight. Um, uh, Jane cannot be here this evening. And um, so it'll be just Soraya and I. The working group, the members of the working group that are working on the CNA report, it was decided by the committee that we wanted to gather a broader range of input. And so we asked for there to be two police commissioners, one representative or member of the marketplace commission, um, and a member of the a representative from the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. Um, so those are the members in addition to the three of us. And um, with that, we'll go to just simply, a, probably I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, um, just a motion to um, adopt the agenda would be helpful. Uh, move to adopt. I'm sorry, is that is that yes? Move to adopt, yes. Okay, thank you so much. So I will second um, all those in favor, I, and I. and we have a um, we have a, an agenda. Um, then we would move on to the minutes of the. Um, I don't have it in front of me. What was the date of the January twenty fifth? Twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so those were the minutes of the 25th. Um, thank you so much for getting those to us so quickly. Um, uh, I'm fine with the minutes. I don't know, Zoray, did you have a chance to take a look? Um, I will say that I did and that they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, we're welcome. You know, the other thing we can do is because there's only two of us, if, if you want to wait till the next meeting, we can do that with all three of us if you prefer to have more time. Uh, sure. Not a problem. All right. So why don't we go? Why don't we? Why don't we continue on? Um, the next item, um, I would imagine, not having it in front of me, but what I would imagine is the discussion of the CN or the public forum. Um, so there is a public forum. There are people um, that are on um, that are here that are uh, members of the public. The way that we've been doing this meeting is that if there are comments that you have while we're doing our work, you're welcome to raise your hand and I'll do my absolute best to recognize you. If there's something that you'd like to say now, um, we're happy to hear that now. Um, and that would be to the, the Public Safety Committee, which is again, myself this evening, it's just myself and Soraya. So if there are any ones, you're welcome to just simply turn on your camera and, um, and speak with us. Um, if there are no members, I'll give it a, I'll give it a little bit of time. And if not, then we'll continue with the next item. Um, Jane, I see that your, I see that your hand is up. Um, if you want to put on your, on your camera, that's fine. If not, if you want to just simply speak, that's fine too. Thank you. I just sure. want to be, get some clarity about the spreadsheet. So I understand that some members of this committee have submitted their responses, but they're not on the spreadsheet available to the public. So will the public eventually see all responses from all members of this committee? Uh, yeah, so so the way it is right now, Jane, is that we at the last meeting, um, we we're going we're going section by section. So this is our first um, our first stab at the at the recommendation. So um, section one, um, and this spreadsheet was um, was created by um, the acting chief. Um, section one, um, is was to be completed by all members of the working group um, for our meeting tonight. And we had asked that people try to get them done by, by noon yesterday. Um, and then they were integrated into one spreadsheet. So what we were talking about before, hi, what we were talking about before was the fact that um, we're, uh, Milo has her responses, but it's in a 
different format. So we're waiting to try to get that together. We don't have them either. Now on board docs, there is a spreadsheet that was posted a couple of hours ago. And that one has um, my responses, Jeff's responses, the BPOA response and Jabu's responses. Yeah, I see all so, that. Okay. Will, will we see everybody's eventually? Well, we will as soon as, as as soon as we're able to get them all. I mean, okay. Soraya has hers up on the on a document that I'm looking at that was just sent, and we're waiting for Milos. The only other members of the committee are Jane and and actually I see Isaac is here. I don't know if you have um, if you have responses, Isaac, or if that's something that you're still working on. Yep, so we did start. Put we actually put it in our own draft. I copied the sheet and uh, we wrote some comments. But yes, we are still working on it. We apologize. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I just the energy be assured that eventually it'll all yes. be. You know, it's obviously a public document. And we want to see everything. Yes. That's, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 No. I mean, I mean, as soon as we have them, I mean, we're our goal was to have them up completely today. But it's. I think we're sort of going through a first a first go around and hopefully we'll be a little bit better on, on section two. Thanks very much. Sure. So I don't know. I mean, we can, we can, we can continue on. I, I, you know, I mean, if we have, if we have the materials that, that, that Milo has given us and we can integrate them, if not, and we need to show them as two separate documents. Um, I just don't know. Have you received those now, Jared? Not as of yet, I don't believe. Um, I think she was still trying to work on the formatting. I oh. do not know why the attachment is changing the format. The file is saved as a, a numbers file. Um, so I am continuing to struggle with this. I do apologize. Um, and numbers is not something that uh, in my day-to-day -day work on work computer, I use Excel all the time, but my lap, my work laptop is a PC. Um, I rarely use numbers on my personal Mac. So I, um, the struggle is real right now. So I do apologize. Uh, I'm still trying to work on it. Well, maybe maybe the way for us to move forward so that you know we can we can try to you know try to get at least through the first half, if not you know even farther into section one, is to is to just move forward, and then you can tell us, Milo, you know if there are if there are things along the way that you know stand out to you, or if you want to give us responses um, to these items as we as we go along. Um, is that, I know that's probably not the most efficient way, but at this point, you know, we just wanna make sure that your comments are integrated into the conversation. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can um, and, uh, um, and at least give it a try. Is that, is that, does that seem okay? Yes, certainly, thank you. Okay, so um, I think what, <laughs> probably in the absence of any other approach, and I'm open to any, any approach, would be to just simply go in a linear fashion. Um, and I know that, uh, I don't know if the BPD Zoom, is that the acting chief or is that um, one, of the, um, one of the officers? Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure we knew who was here and uh, um, as well, the HR director, Karen Durfee, is here, and the REIB director, Taisha Green, is also on Zoom with us. Um, so going to uh, the first, the very first um, recommendation, um, it appears as though, from what I can see that, um, and for those who aren't familiar, the initials uh, QW um, means quick win. That is... Uh, that was the, the the items that are in blue were all the one the original columns that were done um, by the acting chief. Um, the rest are all of the others from the committee. So um, 
it appears as though items two, item item one, one point one point one and one point two point one, yeah. um, that there appears to be general agreement um, from the members of the working group as far as that these are this is a director of review. Um, it is an amendment to a directive and um, is a, a relatively easy fix or a quick win. Um, just in the interest of time, I'm interested from the working group if there are any who wish to talk about those first two items or if there appears to be general agreement and we can um, accept um, the fact that they need that item needs to be amended. And then I think the perhaps the only other thing would be um, uh, maybe next steps would be um, for the uh, an idea if maybe um, uh, maybe the acting chief can give us an idea of what the timeline might be, and we could put that into either a separate column or as something that would give us an idea of how of what that timeline is, and then if that would go to the commission um, and what those other next steps are. Um, so I don't know, Chief Murad, if you can if you could enlighten us on that as to what you think that would be, and then maybe we could move on to some uh, um, some other um, recommendations. Um, so for 1.1, um, I mean, honestly, that that is literally could be done by the time of the next uh, police commission meeting and be given to the police commission in time for them to uh, approve that addition of a sentence. Uh, I mean, all we will be, this does get us into a quick question though, which is, um, so, so for, for this directive, this one was actually written by, officially this directive was adopted by the uh, city council, not by the police commission and not by the uh, Burlington Police Department. So uh, the rewrite is simple. Uh, the, the council could approve it, the police commission could approve it. Um, and, and adding in the sentence that it requires is, is pretty easy. Um, I, I don't know if you want to consult with the stakeholders who were instrumental in adopting that, uh, policy, which is, uh, you know, there were many, and, and everybody remembers that that adoption process in the spring of 2020. Um, but insofar as this, uh, adding cultural cultural competency to to that section, I think it's a, I think it is merely the addition of a bullet. I think that's all that it is. Um, I, I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm pulling up the actual uh, directive right now. Um, apologies. Uh, section eight, training and compliance. BPD will ensure that at a minimum, all members are compliant with the legislative. Additional trainings include uh, anti-bias, power and privilege, um, non-English speaking communities, undocumented communities, cultural competency training and victim witness services. So that's it. it it's, it's literally the addition of three words and an extra comma into uh, 8B of the of DDO3. And that will take, it, it, I mean, it'll take can as you, long as it takes for the police commission to look at it and approve it. Can you read the first sentence again of like what that list is? Sorry. Uh, yes, I, I mean, this is the, I'm reading the directive as the mm -hmm. council adopted it. Um, section eight, is training and compliance. A, eight, uh, section 8A is the BPD will ensure that at a minimum, all members and employees are compliant with council and legislative requirements regarding fair and impartial policing training. 8B, additional trainings may include instruction on anti-bias, power and privilege, non-English speaking communities, undocumented communities, and victim witness services. That's what it currently says. And we would simply do English speaking community, non-English speaking communities, undocumented communities, cultural competency train, cultural competency training, and victim witness services. So I guess the quick win is just adding it, but then there's the question to be had about like just adding it to a list of potential trainings, what that does. So I guess the not quick win is having an overview of like what all the optional trainings are and how readily available those are 
and how to prioritize them and that sort of thing. Yes, although I don't think that was the recommendation. I mean, no, I but just because there were so many other recommendations along those lines, it feels like that's that's I guess the big. I felt like that's what I kept writing in my comments is like, well, we kind of have to have the overview of what's possible and how much time we have and so on. Okay, so yeah, you had I, I noticed you had written that Soraya that you know it, 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 putting it into the directive is is a quick win. Um, actually, you know, having, you know, doing that or how it works into is is much is much more complicated. Um, so I think for the you know for the for the purposes of um, for the purposes of the recommendation, the it would seem as though the next step, as you had written in here, in your next steps, um, uh, Chief Murad, was um, the uh, you know to amend Directive um, DD03, and then um, I'm not really sure how best to do this, Soraya. The um, you know as we go through these, we are going to have to be giving you know to the council these recommendations, and so um, I. Is it fair to say that we would agree that that is the, a next step? Um, the first would be to amend it, which sounds very very straightforward, to then have that amendment approved by the commission, which I don't think has to come back to the council, but that um, uh, would it be, I mean, I'm just putting this out there, would it be um, our recommendation that then the police commission as our proxy in this case would follow up with um you know with with how that training was enacted and report back to us in six months yeah so first of all i guess process question is does it make sense for me to be the one to take notes and send them to jared of like what our conclusion is for each 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 recommendation and then to yeah i think have that you know like in the next two months this will be added and approved by the commission and then the next step is to create an overview of training availability and priorities by the bpd in the next six months well i guess the question is if the if it, so my my question to jared is if if, if effectively the minutes of the meeting are going to be these recommendations um, unless we want something very specific in terms of one person said this, one person said that. If we are doing that as minutes, then it would be practically impossible to do both at the same time, um, I would guess. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I hesitate to put that on you, Zariah. I mean, if you feel you can, that would be great. If you don't, you know, we can do it together. I love taking notes. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then please let us know. You know, I don't want to rush. So let's just make sure that we have that. Um, and I'm fine with the, you know, amending DD03, then, you know, having that amendment back to the uh, PC approved in the next two months. And then um, with a with a follow up on the training. Um, are there other members of the working group that have any other anything else to add to this? Okay. The next, um, the next one is very similar. Um, it, it is also an amendment to DDO three, and perhaps uh, Chief Murad, you could just simply let us know if this you would you would call this a quick a quick win. Um, does this fall in the same category of effectively something that could be done for the next commission meeting? Um, is that a fair, is that fair? That, that is fair, uh, but I think that the notion of what these indicators will be wasn't spelled out in, in I'd have to look again to see if it was spelled out um, in, the, uh, in the report. It's obviously not in the recommendation. Um, and uh, and then if not, I, I think that it gets a little bit more complicated in that, again, the directive as it's written was, was from a couple different groups. Um, 
I would assume they might want to weigh in as well on defining what these indicators are. Okay, who were who were those who were those groups? Do you know? I, I I'm pretty certain this was given whole cloth to the council by the ACLU and Migrant Justice. Okay. Um, well, then maybe maybe the amendment. Um, so, in other words, what you're saying is that you can't really do the amendment until you know what the indicators are. Uh, I mean, I know what I believe some indicators might be, but I, again, uh, we didn't write this particular directive. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Well, all right, so maybe maybe the, um, I don't know, Zariah, do you know with when it comes to the CNA report, if there are questions that we have, are those things that they are then available to explain to us if we ask them? Or actually, Taisha, you're on this call. Maybe you would know the answer. One of you might. Uh, <clears throat> I I would say probably. I mean, I I don't really know because we've had this report since September. It's now January. <laughs> I I don't know like how likely it is that they will do you know give us advice on what they meant for free. But I guess it's it's always possible. I'm not sure. What do you think, Zorai? Um, I think if we, well, one, I feel like this is not a clarification question. I feel like asking them to supply those indicators would be like additional work. So I'm not sure that this is the thing. I do think that if we have a list of clarifying questions, we could continue to list those and then send them to CNA at the end. Yeah, I mean, they don't need to tell us what all the indicators are, but it said be alert for indications of. So we have to we have to be able to say what those. I mean, that would seem, you know, um, or actually examples um, for their officers of what these indicators may be. So indicators of bias is what y'all are what we're talking about. Yeah, this I mean, is the yeah this is number two, this is um I. Item one one point two point one. Wouldn't that be like just a quick Google search about <laughs> indicators of bias? Like, do we really have to reach out to them for for something like that? No, I mean I'm yeah. I'm really just asking the question, um, okay. you know, to make sure that we're being complete. I mean, they may have they may have. I mean, this may be just a very general question. You, you may well be right. Um, I mean, I think if Chief Murat said that he has ideas, then I wonder if just throwing out those ideas and sending them to some of the original folks, if that's Migrant Justice and ACLU um, and the Police Commission for additions, edits, and thoughts might be the best. Okay. So so I guess the the the, the on the column on recommendations would be that, you know, this this working, you know, the Public Safety Committee would ask to have the DDO3 amended um, and would would request that the request of the acting chief or um, the department uh, solicit input from uh, those committees or those individuals that were part of that group um, and then make that amendment with it to go to the commission, um, hopefully within the next 60 days. Um, How does that sound, Chief Miran? Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I mean, yes, that I think that sounds right. Again, it, it really does sort of um, I, I think that if you talk to those parties uh, and ask them what they intended from that or, or what their understanding of that was, that would be helpful. OK, this is in line with the, the BPOA's question of, you know, do you tell us what those indicators are? Right. Okay. Um, and I think we can certainly, you know, have that discussion. I mean, this is, um, you know, we have these sections and we have this particular order, but I will say, as I reviewed these things, there were general categories that weren't always 
together. And, and one of the general categories is um, issues around uh, bias, be it training, be it identifying it. So I, I found that there were a number of things, even though they weren't one after another, were all related um, and could be looked at together. Uh, so I think that it's an important discussion that yeah, I agree with the process of going back to stakeholders, going back to the police commission, and then bringing it to the department. Yeah, I mean, I would tend to agree with you, Milo. I know that, you know, I'm sure that there was obviously rhyme or reason to how CNA organized their report. Um, you know, I, I feel as like the only way that we can, you know, without a lot of advanced planning, you know, which would take a lot of time, I think it's hard to organize um, to reorganize their recommendations, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard. Uh, right. I agree no, with you that I, we are sort of skipping around. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I completely understand that. Um, but it is part of that. <sighs> this whole topic has been neglected. So I think we're going to find ourselves delving into it a little uh well i don't not even a little bit deeper um I, I feel like because it hasn't been honestly discussed that that's why we're having these questions right now um and i'll leave it there thank you okay so that's so you know that's why we will you know the those that directive and that amendment will go back to the stakeholder groups um, that began this process, and it will then go to the police commission. So hopefully there will be a deep enough vetting of this that um, you know there 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 will be sufficient discussion. Um, if there isn't, and it needs to go further, then um, I guess from our committee's perspective, um, we'll trust that you'll let us know that. Um, you, you, not you personally, but I mean, you as a commission would let yes, us. Yes, absolutely. That. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, all right. So the, uh, the third item is uh, another directive review. Um, it's about um, uh, revising the policy so that all complaints, even, even those immediately resolved with an explanation are documented in the same complaint system. Um, uh there was, um, Jeff, you had a question about this. Um, the BPOA response was for sake of, sake of efficiency, this could be discussed in section two, which relates to this, depending on how it's implemented and used, potentially a change in work conditions. Um, so um, uh, I don't know, Jeff, if those were questions that you had that you wanted to ask of the chief yeah. or... Okay. This one, this one struck me, and I, I, I guess my background years ago, I we were in property management business, and we managed a, a, a thousands of condominium units, and every condominium project seemed to have one or two people complain about everything. So, I'm imagining that might be a similar situation in policing, um, and then I, I read through here, and it says that these incidents need not negatively affect an officer's record. Well, need not, what does that mean? It, it could very well affect an officer's record. And then I kind of, my thinking evolved and I said, well, you know, we've got some issues that we need to get our arms around and deal with downtown. We've got uh, drunk and disorderly behavior being one of them um, and a number of things that affect the uh, operation of a marketplace at City Hall Park. And I've seen officers interact with people drinking public intoxication. And in some instances, they just ignore it. We would like to see a robust, um, you know, officers take a, um, a, a real um, active role in, in enforcing our ordinances downtown. And what I 
I would imagine that people, you know, do, you know, feel protective and, and don't want these things to be enforced. And so I, I'm a little nervous that, you know, officers will not feel like, well, why bother? Because people might complain. We, we all want to see this uh, behavior stopped, but um, some people might complain about an officer trying to stop people from drinking. Um, and, and I've, I've seen it. Um, so I'm concerned and I'm wondering how, do we have a large complaint problem in, maybe Chief Murad could answer this. Do we have a problem with a lot of complaints or, or how often does this happen? And, and um, am I, am my fears not, not, you know, it, are, the, are they misguided or? or we, we we generally uh, we register a relatively small number of complaints per year uh, total. Um, all of them are reviewed with the uh, with the police commission in executive session, um, and uh, I can give you, for example, the total numbers uh, for. Um, I'm calling up our form. Uh, so in in 2021, we had a total of 31 citizen complaints. And then there are also uh, what we call administrative reviews, which are generally more internal issues, um, although they can be citizen complaints that become a little bit more serious and require a, an additional layer of review. Uh, we had 11 of those. And then we have what we call BIAs or Bureau, Bureau of Internal Affairs investigations. Those are the most serious and occasion very significant investigations and reports. We had two of those in 2021. Um, in 2020, we had 66 citizen complaints. A great number of those were, uh, we, we had a spate that didn't have anybody named either as officers or civilians as complainants and they weren't really uh, complaints, but they, they run the gamut. Um, there, but there were 66 citizen complaints in all of 2020 and there were four administrative reviews and five BIAs. And I'll just go back one more year. So there's a sense of trend. In, in 2019, there were 41 citizen complaints. There were uh, 10 administrative reviews and nine BIAs. So, so that's our basic range, somewhere between five and, and 10 BIAs, uh, somewhere between you know, four high 40s of, uh, of citizen complaints um, and uh, about 10 administrative reviews. Okay, so it's, it's not a major problem with complaints. Um, I, I'm just fearful that if we want to start enforcing our ordinances, and I would like to, we would all like to see go back to the days when we had a an officer assigned to downtown. That doesn't seem to happening in the last few years or a number of years. But if we had somebody that's they focused on these these issues they could be the ones that people might complain about and they would be less apt to try to stop the public intoxication that we deal with down here. So that, that's my, that's the basis of my concern for this one. But um, if it's not a major issue and, and obviously we want the major issues to be documented, but um, anyway, that's, that's where my concern was. Okay, well, it's good to know. It's good to know what that is. And it's also good to have an idea of how many how many complaints we're talking about, um, you know, so I think we, we know we're not talking about hundreds, hundreds of complaints. Um, it appears as though from the notes of others that um, it's, e this is either a high priority, very high priority, or that there is agreement that all complaints um, need to be documented. Um, I know for myself, I had put out that, um, Obviously, some complaints are going to necessitate further follow-up in time, um, but it was my in my notes that they need to be documented. Um, and so, I guess what um, you know, I, 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 the reason why I feel that way for myself is just simply that you know it, it, they can be tiered. But I think all if we don't document all of them, then it would be next to impossible. For them to be available for the police commission um, uh, to look at them as a, um, as a as a as a level of oversight and transparency when gaining civilian input. So, um, 
you know, I'd, I'd be interested in what other people thought, um, you know, and so that we can come up with, uh, um, you know, I know, I know the chief has a, a, a series of next steps. Um, maybe you can explain that to us, um, uh, to those of us, uh, more, those of us civilians so that we know what exactly you're talking about when you're talking about redraft of DD40 um, and what that would necessitate. Um, and as well, um, you know, then we can come up with a recommendation so that Zariah can put that into the spreadsheet. Sure. Um, Just quick, sorry, quick question before you go into that. I think I'm curious as to, because it's reading it, it sounds like you do agree in terms of logging, or I guess I don't see you disagreeing in terms of logging all documentation. And then I'm wondering if you're just saying some of the, some of the things that are internal may not require the same level of like demographic. I'm, I'm, I don't understand what the partial is because you don't seem to disagree with anything specifically. Um. Part of the part of the the disagreement is that uh, a complaint resolved with an explanation isn't a complaint, um, and so I I don't agree to that. If somebody calls and says uh, your officers were going fast down the street, and the supervisor who takes that call says yes they were responding to a uh, to a homicide that was at the other end of your street, and the person says oh I understand now, that's not a complaint, and it it shouldn't be logged. Um, and, and that's that's what it means by result immediate res, re, immediately resolved with an explanation. That's what DD40 explains and what they were sort of uh, referring to in the CNA report. Um, you know, the the parts that I definitely agree with are uh, we're using benchmark and we're trying to implement it and get the data transferred over to it. That is something that the commission, excuse me, the city council agreed to uh, to help us fund it in. Uh, well, Director Dodson was still here and was instrumental in, in explaining the need for that. Um, I can explain it too. I'm just saying that was the time frame to, to give people an idea of the time frame. Uh, we have it. It has not been as easy to automatically uh, synchronize with Valcor system as we thought it would be. Partly that is because the Valcor system has simultaneously been going huge changes as it is up as it is adopted by agencies around the state. Um, and so uh, we do want to continue to do that. It's really important to us. Um, and that documentation includes uh, a number of these things that are in there. And that's what I agree with, that, that we do want these things. We do want to be under, to, to get complainant demographics and types, et cetera, and outcomes. Um, but at the same time, complaint, complainant uh, demographics are going to be voluntary. Uh, oftentimes these things are made are online or anonymously or on phone. Uh, the paper ones that come, I'm sorry, the paper ones that come from uh, other uh, locations, such as the library or city hall or the high schools, um, also don't have that information. We should re we should redo that form, and so that's a component of this. Um, and uh, then, with regard to the other component, like the the idea that they should be uh, the retention aspect of it um, and the record aspect, which, which is why they have to, to state specifically, these need not negatively affect an officer's record, but they are inside and generated as a record. That I think is ultimately going to be something subject to collective bargaining. I think the union is going to have concerns about that, which is why their response says as much. Um, and so the, the parts with which I agree are the parts that we're already doing and that we can rapidly do, irrespective of a renegotiation of the CBA. Um, and can get done. Um, I think, I mean, I'm just gonna throw out my opinion, but, um, or at least also looking, I guess, across it, we don't have, um, everyone's up there yet, but I think, I guess I agree with CNA that it's important to log all complaints, even if just for the, even if you know you define them differently, or you say like dismissed complaints or something like that, or um, but just even for knowing what they were, and if there's a whole bunch of the same ones over and over again, and if those can be addressed maybe preemptively or something along those lines, I think that's a good recommendation. I think I might lower the priority of it based on what you've said, but it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me that. If just because you can address a complaint that it's not a complaint anymore. 
I would agree with that. And something that we're looking at um, at the commission is trying to see if we can expand the different types of complaints. So expand the, the number of categories to account for something that um, shouldn't, doesn't, or shouldn't result in discipline, but is something that should not be considered unfounded because it could be something that the department needs to look at and consider uh, responding to um, in a general fashion or a or, or for consideration. There, we're finding lately we have a, a number of things that are are a valid concern, but not associated with discipline. I'm not sure if that makes uh, sense, but um, it is it, the whole complaint process, especially since our NACOL training last summer, uh, the commission has worked very hard to make this meaningful um, to people that are submitting complaints um, to address issues where people say no one ever got back to them and things like that. Thank you. Well, I would sort of agree um, with the fact that maybe I had given this a little bit more of a priority um, given, you know, I feel like, I feel like, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard when you're just talking hypothetically to know, um, you know, like the example that you gave us of, you know, somebody calls and says, it's, you know, loud, there's something, uh, you know, an officer was speeding by my house, um, you know, and only to find out that they were responding to something and the person says, yeah, okay. And, you know, it's resolved. It, I guess, you know, it is a complaint because somebody calls it in. It obviously is resolved within a phone call. I don't know how to categorize that except as Milo suggested, which is effectively dismissed complaints, things that came in and were resolved. I don't know how many of those there are um, that come through. Uh, would you have an estimate? Um, would you have an estimate, Chief, on how many of those come through in a year or a month? Oh, or no, that is that's a routine part of being a, a desk uh, sergeant or or the officer in charge to get calls like that and resolve issues at the very lowest okay. level. And it's part of it is part of the current directive, um, and that that's an explicit aspect of it. Any complaint, irrespective of its its merits or its seriousness or how quickly it is resolved or not, or even whether it's a complaint that comes in through the electronic portal, is logged automatically. And so those are, are separate, but phone calls, um, you know, I, I think that this is a significant administrative burden to, uh, to supervisors to have to have them go through all that uh, for something that is not, that has been resolved and isn't something that, that is uh, an issue anymore. I think that there are, are a lot of things that come through that way. Um, on the portal, on the other hand, we do it because there is the e-trail and Yet the the you know Chair Gamash here gets every single online complaint that comes in at the same time as I do, and I believe he will attest that there are a number that are uh, that are not complaints on their face. Uh, they're not the majority of them, but they they come in not infrequently. Things that indicate clear issues with mental health, and and you can see right away that the incident never really occurred. Things that are misreports that are people who are trying to report a crime that happened, or they are trying to uh, say something that is not a complaint against an officer. Um, people who are, are sort of making generalized statements about policing. Uh, those things have all come through the portal. Uh, the commissioners have seen those. And the idea that anything like that that comes in via the phone is going to have to be recorded and typed up and then submitted and entered by the OIC is an unreasonable administrative burden, in my opinion, for officers who are uh, supervisors who are already uh, really, really overworked and overburdened. Um, Jabu, maybe you could speak to that. I mean, you see these, in your opinion, um, 
what, what, you know, I know you would put this as a number one, but, um, you know, based on that, um, and given that you've seen them, what, what's your, what are your thoughts? Um, I know that Shireen volunteered to look into, uh, redrafting this. Um, I mean, I know that she's not done, I by no means done yet, but I, I can reach out to her and see where she's at with that and then report back to you guys uh, next week or an email later on this week. So in other words, she's working on redrafting DD40? Uh, yes, to, uh, to honestly, uh, I think I put in my notes in my, uh, here, uh, to streamline and unify the grant process. Um, more or less what was in, more or less what was the recommendation here, which was, yeah. All right. So maybe maybe it would be best. Um, I don't know how far along she <clears throat> is. Um, uh, you know, the chief's note on next step was potentially redraft all of DD40. Um, I'm assuming she must be doing some one area of it. Well, I would, if I may add. Sure. Anything related to complaints should definitely be a one. The complaint, when I started the, um, on the commission, complaints were described to us. We couldn't see them. And so we couldn't verify what they actually were. And then there was questions of what is the follow through to the complainant. So there is the acknowledgement, as the chief just said, there are some things that come through that aren't real uh, th that aren't sent to the proper place right uh, someone complains about parking well the department no longer handles parking that should be going to dpw for example but there were things that were legitimate and serious complaints so how are we tracking them how how is what are the responses what are the timelines to responses and investigations all of that we've been working on and building um, a new process. So there is a lot of things as, uh, so going back to what I mentioned earlier, where, hey, we're looking at now, maybe we have to look at different categories because there are things that are a legitimate concern, but don't involve um, officer discipline, may not need uh, investigation, but may need the department to consider something. Uh, so everything related around complaints, there is a, a certain kind of like we are on following the best practices that NACOL set forth um, to the commission. We have a lot of things that we're working on and updating. And as uh, Chairman Gamash just said, um, we are in the process of, of updating as we continue to improve the process. Um, I can say personally, I would like to know, uh, like we're, we're now getting that electronic information, but when things are submitted via paper or other areas, I, I don't know how we find a balance between making sure that something that is more serious is it somehow overlooked? Thanks. Um, so maybe, so maybe Zariah, the thing, the recommendation here, or the next steps in for us as a committee, are that we, we're well, we are aware that um, the police commission is following up with a redraft of DD40. Um, that information hopefully will be available, or the redraft will be available, say in the next thirty days. Sounds like, does that sound reasonable based on what you know, Jabu? Uh, sorry. 30 day, around um, 30 days, you think? Right now, I'm just doing the timelines I, by quarter, yeah. so. Oh, well, by quarter? Uh, yeah. Okay, so then we can say quarter. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I know that, like, I know the top of our priority for directive we're looking at right now is, is DD 13.02, DD 13.03. That's, like, yes. the top of the list. Yes. So, it It'll come right after that. I have to assume. Okay. All right. So maybe the maybe the recommendation then is that you know we are aware and that would 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 ask for the for that because that is an important one. I mean, not to say that the others aren't important, but this one is an important one. Complaints are important, and uh, 
that perhaps that would be something when it does come to the commission that you could alert the public safety committee and we could um, uh, see a copy of that and um, follow that as well. I, oh, I'm sorry, Chief Murad, did you want to say something? You're, you're welcome to just chime in if you'd like. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Um, That's okay. Uh, no, I, I wanted to point out that we've been doing the, the sharing of the online uh, submissions for more than a year now. And the mm -hmm. department did that voluntarily uh, after, a, uh, after, after something that was brought to our attention by Councillor Jang. Um, and uh, the other kinds of reports come in and are reported uh, within the month uh, because they are part of the spreadsheet that is shared on every monthly police commission meeting. And anything of, of greater seriousness that comes in not through the portal, but uh, through some other method is also shared in general. It's certainly within the month, but more often than not, it is shared directly uh, with the, the chair once, uh, a, if a case is open, if it's of, if it's of significant importance beyond um, something that is, is incidental. So uh, those, we, we I, I'm, confident that we've actually been doing a, a very good job of making that sharing uh, happen um, and uh, of making certain that it's timely and complete. Uh, and we review uh, a, a parallel spreadsheet that is maintained by Vice Chair Hart uh, each month to make certain that that is happening. Okay, well, that's great. I mean, I think that, so that between that and, and, the, and the comments that were noted by Milo, as far as, uh, you know, just making sure that there, this, this, um, this directive, you know, finds that balance of, you know, of covering, you know, as much as can be practically covered um, in a way that um, does its best to ensure that um, there isn't anything that falls through the cracks is probably, uh, it sounds like that is what uh, Shireen is working on. So um, it sounds like this is underway. I'm not sure, Soraya, if there's more that we want to say, um, or to just have a you know a, an update on these on these items in the in the the next quarter. So this will be a quarterly thing, meaning starting, I don't know, I guess starting, <laughs> I don't know if it would be starting today, but I mean starting say when this when the, these recommendations are are noted for the council, which might not be for a little while. Mm -hmm. Sorry, That's say that last part again on timing to follow um, up. Yeah, well, it, it, according, it, it sounds like according to Jabu that Shireen is working on this and, and may very well be done with it by within a month or so that that would, is that right? I believe that's what you had said. Um, yeah, sorry, that's not the part. It was the part oh. that you said on the revisiting it. When did you say we expect to revisit it? When did I or he? you me um well it would it, it would um you know i think once the draft is available to the commission that we would i mean my suggestion would be the that the recommendation would be would be that that would then be shared um with the public safety committee when that draft is in is in you know is in reasonably good shape so it doesn't mean that we have to be there we're not there to micromanage we're there to just have you share that information when you feel that you've got it to a good place? Yeah. We'll be very happy to do that. Okay. And actually, um, if I could ask Jabu, can we follow up on issues around quote unquote paper complaints? Because I don't believe that that's been resolved. I think we've had, we had questions um, about that process of getting that information to us. So I would like um, us to look into that. And uh, yes, definitely, uh, Councilor Jang did have a constituent that had a complaint that really did bring out the process of how not all the complaints were, were getting, weren't having a process to where th there was follow-up. And then that did you know, based on the additional concerns from the commission, help set up us the commission being copied on the electronic complaints. But um, I think that this particular recommendation does bring to light that we really need to make sure where we've shorn up the the holes of of where 
um, different things can come in. And I think also too, and I don't know if this is quite part of it, but there on the Talitha side, there was actually a number of items brought up regarding um, even though I, as a, uh, a, a English as a, my, you know, first language, my primary language can go to this online portal and easily submit a complaint. If I needed to, there were barriers, uh, for other individuals in our community, um, our, our new American neighbors. So I don't know if we, we throw that in, um, because that wasn't, something really addressed in CNA, but it definitely came up in Talitha. So I just want to mention that maybe that's another takeaway to the police commission to have a review of the online submission. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go forward knowing that we've, that this is to some degree underway and, We'll look forward to, um, you know, getting getting notified when that when that draft is, you know, in a place that you know we can all take a look at it. Um, I'm wondering, um, and I would ask this question of uh, of the chief. Um, items 1.41, 1.51, and 1.61. There tends to be, you know, general agreement on on these, um, both from uh, from your, um, you know, your uh, recommendation, your assessment of the recommendations, as well as the members of the working group. Um, so I'm wondering if you might be able to tell us, just so that um, Zariah can fill this in, how what you feel is the timeline involved on on each one of these, and then actually the other one would also be item 1.71, um, and we'll go back to 1.62 after. I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. That's okay. What was it's all right. No worries. So um, what we're talking about is item 1.41, 1 1.51, 1 yes. 1.61, 1 and then also if we just jump ahead to 1.71, right. there right. appears to be unanimous agreement that these are you know that we sure. we agree with you. And so what our question is, or what my question is, is what you think for, in terms of what Zariah can put in as a recommendation, how long, what you feel the timeline is for each of those. Um, and then that, and I'm assuming that those would be the same thing they would go to the commission. The timeline for that, yes. And, and the timeline for those is is the same as, as it was for 1.1.1. 1 .1. Um, th these are generally very simple directive uh, amendments really. Um, for example, uh, the idea of, of intervention that is in um, uh, that is in our use of force uh, directive. It was in the use of force directive that we created, and it is also in the new statewide use of force directive. Um, and arguably, it is already in DD one because DD one says that we cannot commit crimes, and if we fail to report excessive force, we are committing a crime. But if we desire to have another explicit statement that, that covers the same ground, that's relatively easy. We can include it, we will add a rule to DD01. Uh, at the end of the rules, I believe there are 33, although I'd have to look to be sure. Um, and we would uh, simply make a, a rule of what is already a component of the use of force directive, but it would be dropped in the rules. Uh, it, there are 34 existing rules. This would be number 35. And it would say um, duty to uh, I'm sorry um, duty to intervene or and mm -hmm. duty to intervene and report um, and it would go in there and the amendments to DD43 are also similarly uh, sort of simple uh, textual changes really small textual changes I, I think the place where the reason that these are quick wins is because these are the places that are they're only the only mentions of those directives for the most part whereas Another reason of the partially agree for the previous one, 1.3.1, 1 .1, 1 .1, is that ultimately DD40 is a flawed directive. And ultimately DD40 needs to be ramped and revamped entirely. And so the notion of doing quick fixes to DD40 is wasteful. 
we, we need to redo the whole thing. And there, there's no one fix that is going to make it so much better that it's worth spending the time that that one fix would take. Uh, whereas there aren't a lot of direct, there, there aren't a lot of in this section, um, places where you're doing significant changes to DD01. There are a couple. There's uh, 1.6.1. There is, uh, there, there's another one down farther down. Um, uh, which number was it? Uh, there's another one. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. 1.7.1 uh, is a small DD01, uh, DD01 amendment. And so those small amendments can all be sort of packaged together, brought forward, and essentially uh, inserted with a simple approval by the police commission. Those are easy. Uh, DD40, the rewrite of DD40 is going to be much more complicated. And that's why the potentially redraft DD40 note in uh, the next steps part of 1.3.1 uh, ties into a whole bunch where it refers back to all of those again and again. Um, especially in, by the time you get to section two. Section two refers repeatedly back to the notion of redoing all of DD40. And that's a much, much heavier lift because ultimately DD40 okay. should be at least two directives. But these okay. one things are, as I said, we uh, write it, give it to the police commission, uh, you know, before the police commission meeting and then they vote on it in the police commission meeting. Okay, all right, thank you. So. Um... So Zariah, it would seem as though um, for the recommendation that you can just do a you know a copy on the on the way that we worded it in item one point one one, that could be um, inserted into one point four one, one point five one, and one point six one, and one point seven one. Um, the only one is there anyone who um, you know anyone who feels differently? Any members of the working group who? who feel that, that there's any challenges with that recommendation. It seems pretty straightforward. Um, the one that is in the middle that isn't as straightforward is 1.62. Um, and that one, it appears as though um, what you're saying is, um, or what I think most of us are saying, although Jeff, you had a question about what bystanders? Well, I'm, I'm assuming it means active bystander would be a law enforcement officer, not directly involved in the situation. Is that what bystander means? Uh, or, or do we mean active employing active by, bystander for law enforcement? Well, I mean before before I answer before I answer a question to do with policing, I think maybe we could ask the chief what that and, exactly. And what actually. That means. Sorry, for the sake of, else. and sorry, my internet's just a little messed up. So I'm going to keep my camera off and maybe I'm a little bit delayed and trying to jump in. But I would say for the sake of time, I wonder if for the training ones, all of the recommended training ones, instead of arguing about all of them separately, if we can just say the next step for this is to get that overview of training availabilities and priorities, and then have a whole discussion about training at some point, instead of all us That's trying fine. to talk about each 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 training suggestion as it comes up. Okay. Oh, so I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Milo. Go I, ahead, Milo. I agree with that up to a point. I do believe that the issues around training uh, for quote unquote cultural competency and bias needs to be separate because it, right now we're looking at, at a failure in that area in terms of getting information. We have reference to information, but we still haven't seen the information. And I think it's really important that we have a clear idea um, I guess looking forward, I guess that's one of the things we have to figure out. Do we just say at this point that we don't want to look at the past, but that we know that there is a clear path forward, what that will involve and have some immediacy because we have a department that continues to struggle with increasing 
d- racial disparities as incidents have gone down and not taking an honest look at it. And it is really disturbing. And it's sad. And it, it's a failure. We are failing the citizens of Burlington. We need to be advocating for all the citizens of Burlington. Burlington is changing rapidly. You know, we've discussed this before. Our school system is is approaching 40% BIPOC. These children are growing up. They're living in this community. They're working in this community. They're shopping in this community. So we we have to take this with with more seriousness. Um, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Well, so so um, so before we before we leave that before we leave it, just you know, my my question, Milo, is so, so you know the suggestion was because there are a number of training recommendations that we discuss them to try attempt to discuss them all at one time. I mean, if there are concerns about this particular one that we can incorporate, um, I mean, obviously we're we're interested in your perspective of you know this one in particular um if not i mean we can always go on and um and put the training items together but since you you brought it up i mean you raise a good point what would be your what would be your suggestion at least as it pertains to this one um if you have one i can see I, when i looked at some of these training items there were some that have more immediacy. Mm-hmm. I don't, if, if we group them to review them all at once, I, there's a different timeline in my mind about some of these training sessions. Like we, uh, going back to the issues of quote unquote cultural competency, I put that in quotes because that's becoming a very overused term that you know, sounds kind of cool, but what does it really mean to people? Um, the, the This type of training, because there has been real difficulty to get the department to take it seriously, I just feel that it's, it's, it, it needs to stand alone from the other training recommendations because there is more of an immediacy. We need the department to take an honest look at what's happening with these racial disparity numbers. They may be able to explain them, but right now they, they, they haven't been. And because the numbers continue to increase, we have to know that there is effective training. You know, Going back to having a speaker who said, well, we have to look at presenting information in a different way because uh, previous types of training have shown not to be effective. So we need a plan of action with regards to that. And we need to help the department come up with a plan of action. Um, We as a commission have asked numerous times over a very long period for a strategic plan and we haven't received it, so I feel now that this is an opportunity to really help the department with this. Thank you. Okay, so um, you know, I mean, I I hear you. Uh, um, you know, I'm wondering, Zaria. I mean, I I hear what you're saying about trying to do these together so that we don't, you know, we don't spend, you know, that maybe it is easier to spend the time all at one time. Um, the only next step that the chief has put down here is determining the availability of able training. So it would appear to me that, um, you know, there is not a, there is not a disagreement here. There is just simply a, an issue of availability. And, you know, I know for myself, I had noted, um, you know, that would the chief be able to report to the uh, police commission uh, by the end of the first quarter, um, you know, about its availability and integrating it into a plan. We could certainly call that a strategic plan for training um, and, and have that as our recommendation. Um, and then when we get into other trainings, put that, add that to what is effectively a strategic um, 
you know, a strategic plan. Does that seem reasonable to you? Um, yeah, the only thing is, should I, I might just for, I think how many things we're putting into quarter one, I might just say quarter two. Does that seem fair? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know, were you, were you on when we were talking about the other ones that we could just simply do a, you know, a copy from yes. one, mm -hmm. one, 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 you got that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, may I to answer Jeff's question, the officer. Sure. Is the oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Of course. To, off, to answer Jeff's question, the officer is the bystander. ABLE training is about turning uh, officers into active bystanders rather than just standing. It is a program designed to, for example, prevent what happened with George Floyd, uh, although it long predates George Floyd, uh, to encourage those officers to tell Derek Chauvin to get off uh, or otherwise intervene. It is a duty to intervene program. And it's not been shown to be all that effective. Um, it's uh, determine the availability has to do with the cost and whether or not we have time to implement it. Uh, we have a rule about it uh, in the directive. Uh, we don't have a rule yet. We, we have a very uh, ex uh, an explicit admonition in the directive that goes to the level of a rule because it explicitly states that failure to intervene is uh, something that renders an officer subject to termination uh, and legal consequence. That's in the state law as well. Um, and we also uh, are now talking about turning it into a rule in DDO one as well. Uh, and so um, that to me renders the training uh, not a high priority based on the, that we only have so much time to train and we only have so many hours that we can do it in and so many people that we can devote to training at any given time when we only have four people on the street. And so uh, that, was my, that, that was my rationale for saying consider and ranking it three. So, so you it's so you're carrying that in one one point seven point one. You're already requiring officers to 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 act that way to do that. Um, so, what would any special training do for the officers? Because it's already required, and you already encourage it. Um, it the training seems like overkill. Um, no. No, no, no. I really disagree with that. Well, I'm sorry, I really well. disagree with that. I, I mean, I, I, I respect your opinion, sir. Forgive me for jumping in. But um, I can just tell you some of the things I've seen on body cam footage. I believe that although um, because I feel that there's certain other training uh, and, and I do take into consideration what the chief is saying with regards to hours and availability. Uh, there's other things that might be higher, but this is important. I, I really feel that this is important. And from a national standpoint, we there are so many incidents. I mean, the, the George Floyd is, is, is burned into everybody's mind, but there are incidents all the time where the officers standing by didn't intervene when they needed to. Um, so it is changing a mindset uh, in policing uh, nationally and here. Um, and there's a few other things I'd like to say, but I want to say that I, I would not consider this to be uh, redundant. I believe that officers need to be trained on this because it is changing a, a, a mindset. Thank you. So I guess I get Karen, if I just the yeah. follow-up question is so if it's required and encouraged, I mean, how often, Chief Mira, does does this actually happen in practice right now? Um uh, you mean an intervention of some sort between well, how often is there a situation where you where you did have a, an officer, you know intervene and say, wait a second, that's, that's wrong. That's a wrong practice. You gotta, you know, we, we gotta stop and, and regroup here and do it differently. I mean, and, and I, I'm assuming it's when a, a more uh, senior officer needs to be told to, to change their practices, right? Is that what we're talking about here? In general, yes. Although, uh, yes, I mean, I think that that's generally the notion that an officer with, with a little bit more experience or training or tenure may interrupt another officer or say, we're not gonna do that. Um, 
certainly, you know, something as extreme as as the the horrific thing that happened in Minneapolis uh, on May 25th of, of 2020, that has not. But a, a regular smaller incidents, hey, you know, we're not going to do that, or officers turn away from a situation and and discuss a little bit and team back. Those kinds of things happen all the time. Uh, that's a, a regular component. They officers work with each other in the field to evaluate what they're doing and think about next steps all the time. That's absolutely a component of, of how they operate. So it depends on how we're describing it. I mean, that's not active bystander. Active bystander is intervening in something very specific, which is uh, generally some kind of criminal behavior on the part of another officer. Excessive force is criminal. And, and if it's not criminal, if, if a excessive force is defined not by the public's uh, being horrified by a use of force or, or rendered uncomfortable by viewing a use of force, excessive force is defined by a, an, uh, by a state's attorney or a prosecutor or a district attorney saying that was not reasonable. That was not reasonable, objective and reasonable according to the Graham standard in the Constitution. That was illegal. And that is excessive force. Um, and, and, and so, how often, you know, that is very, very, that doesn't happen. Yeah, how often does that happen in, in the department? Uh, to my knowledge. Sorry, did we lose you? No, I, 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 oh, I sorry. It's okay. I did, I didn't know if we, I mean, uh, I don't know that that's a question. I saw Chair Gamash express okay. some frustration by the question. So. Okay. Sorry, I'm just frustrated by the question because it's training. Sure, it's something that doesn't have to get used all that often, but like firearm training, they don't use their firearms often, but you need plenty of training so you know when not to use your firearm. It's kind of the same. I feel it's the kind of same thing with this disabled training. You know, like active bystander training, you don't use it all the time, but you should have it so you know when to act on it. So, and I kind of feel like we're just kind of like losing the plot here a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's stay focused. Sorry. I, I would I would agree with you. I would agree with you, um, Zaria. Um, you know, I go back to where we where we had where we were before. Um, it would seem as though the recommendation the the recommendation that I think you probably have already written in was going from in, instead of Q one to a Q two, and I'm I'm fine with that. I mean, we 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 have to. We do have to try to prioritize these things. We can revisit some of these if there are serious concerns on the part of the working group, but you know this is important. And just because it doesn't get used every does day doesn't mean that you shouldn't have it. Um, so are you okay with that, Soraya? I am. So okay. sorry, just to check what I have right now is sure. on these is next steps is that by August 1st with review of police commit, or sorry, by August 1st, BPD with review of police commission create overview of training availability slash priorities as foundation for strategic training plan. Right, and that we would, you know, as far as the ABLE training, that we would certainly try to um, to see, to, to determine that availability, um, you know, with the, um, and, and prioritize that for, you know, the second, the second quarter, whatever that's, I, I guess the second quarter would be after, if we use the, if we use the city fiscal year, then it would be like in the fall. Oh, sorry. Really sure yeah, I've been, I'm not really sure what we're using for that, but go, yeah, sorry. sorry go I was just saying quarter one in terms of, is it happening this quarter, this calendar year quarter, next calendar year quarter, or I was not going off the city's fiscal year. Okay, so if it would be, then it would, I would think we're not, I mean, we are in the first quarter. We're already, we're already a third of the way through the first quarter. So I would guess that we're talking about if, if it's that, maybe what we're really talking about is the third quarter then. If we're using calendar quarters for this year, that would mean that that would be something that would be, um, you know, just, just trying to, prioritize so that, you know, if we prioritize everything, then it, it becomes very difficult to, you know, given the number of hours in a day to get all of them done. I mean, I'm just wondering if that's just too much, you know, I mean, we're, we, we haven't gotten that far. Are we, are we prioritizing, are we prioritizing 
things in a way that's un, un, unreasonable or unrealistic. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'll say August 1st, which is quarter three. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so um, the next there we're, we're, we're definitely making some progress here. Um, we're up to 1.81. And this was the issue about the prescribed protocol for where the use of canines falls in the use of force continuum. And you know, um, the chief's next step said that, you know, this is not a recommendation. It's um, sort of like a statement. Um, it appears as though, uh, actually, uh, Zoraya, you and I felt about the same. Mine was that, that I did see this as a recommendation, just encouraging that perhaps as an agenda item that the police commission follow up maybe quarterly on um, to see the prescribed protocols being followed. I don't know if that's something, we have two police commissioners here. Is that, does that seem like a, a reasonable thing? And then if you, Chief, if you have any comments on that. Um, so with regards to anything related to the use of force policy, because the statewide policy now dictates, I mean, one of the questions that I had, and maybe Jerry can answer it, is um, the statewide policy now is the, is the floor, is the minimum required that must be followed. Can a department add upon it? Yes, in theory, if the, if the state law says that this is what you must do, we, I mean, there's a number of factors that we'd have to take into consideration, but you could arguably, yes, make things stricter than what the state has. Um, okay. I, I don't want to make that just like a blanket statement. There are things, I mean, constitutional rights, et cetera, like there's a lot to consider, mm -hmm. but yeah, in general theory, you could add on to it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, uh, you know, I think from I think from my perspective, I mean, I I had sort of looked at this as almost like something that, you know, we at the council get certain updates on a quarterly basis, um, you know, and this would just simply be a way of getting, you know, an update. Um, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's that a serious, I'm not sure how serious the use of canines, how often that happens, but I do think it's something that we should follow. Do you think we should do it annually? Quarterly seems intense. I was going to say, I'd say annually because since I've joined the commission, I can't, I can't recall a single use of force involving a canine. Okay, then I, I, agree then I okay, then I'm in favor of annually. Um, now the Milo, you brought something up. That I, would I'm apply. sorry to interrupt. May I ask a question? What that means to follow the prescribed protocol for where the use of canines falls on the force use of force continuum? Yeah, you maybe we can. You have, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I mean, it, it is not a recommendation. The, the the use of force protocol does define where canines fall on the on the continuum. As in, are they equivalent to a impact weapon or to deadly physical force? And they are not deadly physical force. They are generally ranked between impact weapon and, for example, conducted and conducted electrical weapon or CW or taser. Um, and so they're higher than OC spray. You know, the, the continuum generally goes from mere presence of a police officer to hard commands from a police officer to physical force from a police officer to, uh, and then that usually gets differentiated as well. Um, I mean, officers spend, spend weeks and months on these, uh, on these things. Um, and then there is a, uh, the, the continuum within physical force, uh, having hands on strikes and kicks, uh, et cetera, then we move to OC spray, then we move to batons, and usually that's where canines are. They are ranked there in the use of force continuum for the state, 
this wasn't a recommendation. It just said they should follow the protocol for where the use of canines fall. It's not even, it's like a, it's like saying the sun should come up tomorrow. That right. was my so I think objection to Maybe you. the point should be is that annually, I think to Karen's point and some of the things that we have in our notes is just to say, police commission to annually review use of force. And I think there's some recommendations around how much citizens are involved in that or not so that we can give some feedback back to the state. But I think just annually reviewing is not a bad recommendation. Um, and I don't think it's specific to the canine. I think it's just saying annually looking at the use of force, making sure it's still in line with what we think it should be. That, uh, that's wonderful. And it's certainly the prerogative of this. That's not in the recommendation, nor is it in the CNA report. OK, so I think we'll, we'll, go, with, we'll go with that, Zariah. Um, um, I know for myself that, you know, when I was going through these recommendations, I'm trying to, and trying to understand items 1.9, 1 1.10, 1 1.11, um, and 1.12. Those all um, are use of force policy. And I'm, you know, I, I, particularly to the chief and members of the commission who obviously are much more well-versed in this than I am. I'm trying to understand um, when you say that statewide use of policy supersedes, and then given the question that was just asked of Jared, that, that, is, the, that is the floor. Is that my understanding? That is the floor. And is it possible um, to, to, to do more with that or... Um, you know, the, for example, it should rewrite the statement to replace face down prone with prone only. And I read the rest of it, which made a lot of sense to me. Is that not something that we have the authority to do? Jabu? I was going to say, for what it's worth, maybe uh, we, we could forward these recommendations on, on those points. Um, I forget the body that writes it for the same. I think it might be the uh, Vermont Criminal Justice Council. We can forward them the recommendations for what it's worth and see what they do with it. If we go that route. Yeah, I mean, that, that, would, that sounds like, like that. a great idea. Uh, Milo, I'm sorry. I would support that. And I think also, um, and it may be something we need to look into, uh, um, Jabu, do you, the yearly report that we get I'm wondering if I have to go back and review the the format that we we receive it in and and what it includes because it has a lot of summary with regard to use of force. I'm sorry, what's the question? Well, I was just thinking about the annual report that is already mm -hmm. produced. Uh, the data report from the city side or the report that we produce? Maybe both. Okay. okay. Um, or maybe um, maybe it wouldn't be appropriate. I'm sorry. I am so tired from last <laughs> night. I <laughs> I listened to the whole meeting. Um, let me back off from that thought and and think on it a little bit more. Yeah, we'll, we'll connect on that and clarify that up. Uh, All right. Yeah, um, that would be great. Thank. You. <laughs> that's okay. We were we all had a late night last night. Um, so when it comes to these uh, four um, recommendations, and I'm not sure what the protocol is, I think, I mean, I think, um, Zariah, I'm, 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 I, I think what Jabu has mentioned is a good idea. If that is something, you know, and we, my understanding is that most of the items in the use of policy statewide began here, due to the um, the good work that we that many of us did um, to. To, to bring our use of force policy to a, a pretty good place. Um, so I think, you know, bringing this to the state's attention, and I'm not sure what the protocol is for doing that, but I would be in favor of that being our recommendation. Yep, 
got it and I put it down as quarter four because kind of with the line of that being potentially annual and none of okay. us ranking it as a high priority. Okay. Um, so the next one would be um, item 1.13. Um, that's developing a separate reporting system for the use of a firearm to kill a dangerous or seriously injured animal. Um, and it appeared as though we all had that fairly important. Um, and I know for myself, given my question for the chief would simply be um, to, to know, you know, what is involved with this? You know, what would be the timeline for implementation? Um, you know, is this a, an improvement to the Valcor software? Um, is this something that's already been done in other communities? Um, if you could sort of give us an idea of what's involved, I, I'd appreciate it. Um, so, uh, as I said in the note, so could Benchmark track this? It could. Um, we could create a, a new Valcor category, uh, which is a, a matter of asking the Valcor board to do something. There are certain things we can do easily. Um, and there's certain things we have to ask them to do. So our, our administrators, not, not our network administrators for Valcor have the ability to do certain kinds of edits on their own, uh, such as a dropdown, larger things, in, in, including new checkboxes or, or new other things, uh, like you know an entire new field um, that would require working with Valcor board and then having the, the actual company that runs Valcor do it. It's much more elaborate. Um, this is something that just doesn't happen. We, uh, on the rare occasions where we dispatch animals, they are wild animals, uh, deer on the, on the highway. Um, uh, I had a, a, a I had a, you know, a online, uh, person describing themselves as upset over the fact that we shot a cat. It was not, it was an opossum. And when we clarified that for the person, the person, uh, said, oh, okay, and then said, you shouldn't shoot opossums either. Um, but uh, that's where these, where these instances happen. Uh, the notion of, uh, again, you know, this is an example of a, of a boilerplate recommendation from a national company that never came here. This, this, this community concern and national reports of officer uses against firearms and pets, that's absolutely something that happens in the country. We've all seen disgusting examples of officers unnecessarily shooting non-aggressive animals. Um, and uh, it's really, really awful, but it's, it's not something that's occurred here. So, so maybe if, if that's the case, um, you know, it sounds like it's a relatively straightforward thing. I don't know. I mean, I'm sort of inclined to think based on, based on what you said that maybe it's a three and not a two. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else have an opinion about that? I think maybe putting, I mean, I think it's, if this is a problem that has happened, maybe in other communities, probably best practice to have a policy on it, given what Donda said, I feel like putting it into year two, like yeah. not even, I would definitely deprioritize it. Okay. I would, I would as well. Um, we will um, just for the, just for just for the the committee the working group all others um it's now 7 15 um is everyone okay with going till 7 30 we'll try to get a couple more done and then we'll call it an call it an evening in 15 minutes um thanks um i appreciate that thumbs up sign of confidence <laughs> jabu um so, uh, all right, we're on to, we've got a number of other things that are also director of reviews that maybe we can, we can a little bit buzz through a little bit more quickly. But before that is 1.14, which is um, creating channels for the Burlington community members, for Burlington community members to, to be involved in review of use of force policies so community, the community can understand why such use of force may be permitted, and so the BPD can reconsider their policies and practices based on community input. Um, you know, I, you know, it, it's interesting though, the, the three, there were three of four of us that um, 
of the members of the working group that that responded to this in 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 fairly similar fashion. Um, you know, I, and I wouldn't be surprised, Milo, if your comments were were similar. If you had some, um, that this is important, um, and we we all sort of said it about the same, a little bit differently, but about the same. Um, I I don't know what the best approach to this is. You know, I know uh, Chief, you had said you know topic for a summit uh, meeting. Um, you know, and I. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Zaria, if we want to go and spell that out, or if it's a if it's some sort of feedback that we could give to the commission and let them figure out how to best implement it. Um, but I agree with you that it is critical. I feel like, um, and maybe it's the wrong way around. And what we did on is that instead. He, so right now, I on one point eight point one have. Police Commission to annually review use of force engaged communities applicable and provide recommendations to state. And I wonder if I should put that here instead and then continue to say on all the other ones that we talked about, see 1.141, because that's actually where it's more, most applicable. 1.14. One 1.141, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. What did you say? What, we run that by me again? What did you say? Yeah, sorry. I... Um, I wrote police commission to annually review use of force, engage community as applicable and provide recommendations to state. Okay. That sounds good. Are there others? Do others have a, have a, um, and I know chief, you had said you partially, partially agree. I'm not really sure what you partially agree with or, or don't agree with or if you could, if you might be able to clarify that. Uh, yeah, it, it's because the reconsider the policies is is really off the table owing to the state policy. Um, ah, okay. Uh, the, I would like to hear the public's uh, view on, on a number of things. I think that we have very differing views in some of the folks who uh, are, uh, are very, very passionate and active in the community and uh, have specific ideas about how and when force should be used. I think those ultimately will differ with the majority of the community. Um, I think that we've seen two examples of that uh, and, and I've made them public in an effort to try to get some kind of community consensus public to the best that I can uh, to try to get community consensus, most prominently in the one that occurred about a year ago now in January of 2021 um, and asking our community what they want us to do with regard to taking uh, enforcement action when we are to stop someone, when we are not to stop someone, uh, what we do when a person resists the authority of a, of a law enforcement officer to legally stop him or her. Uh, and so I think those are the topics for a summit. Those are the things why, that I am uh, would be eager to have a, a, a true community engagement with. But as, uh, as Chairman Gamash's uh, entry notes, all these other things are being done. Every single piece, the, the, the use of force policy that we created in, in July of, of 2020 was produced with the public. It was produced with the public both through the police commission's ultimate review of it and then going back upstream of its development, it was the committee to review policing practices that met again and again from, from August of 2019 through February of 2020. Anybody could go to it, anybody could weigh in on it. The members of it were selected from the community as a sample. I, I don't know how much more sort of engaged and, and, uh, and uh, involved we could get short of sending out surveys where everyone has to, to sort of go down as a knock list on, on, a, on a policy, you know, here's what people think. And then we take the majority opinions or something. That was a really great, I was proud to be a part of the Committee to Review Policing Practices and then develop the use of force policy that came out of it in July of 2020. Um, and that too, how that got reviewed by the Police Commission at over several, uh, over two or three meetings because they were emergency session meetings because we were trying to do it uh, fast to answer a national moment, but the public could weigh in on that and had opportunity. Uh, now the public, as, as Chairman Gamash notes too, the public has an opportunity to weigh in on a monthly basis on every single use of force that we that we do. They're all published online. They're published in advance uh, on board docs of every police commission meeting and anyone can engage and say, what's up with this one? 
And the commissioners routinely do say what's up with this one and ask to see body camera footage. The redaction specialist that was approved last night is going to make it possible for us to share even more of them so that not only will we put out the report, but also the video. So it's not just commissioners looking at video, it will be the public looking at video. Uh, and I want to expand and expand as much as possible based on workload, the number of cases that we put on video. We're gonna start with specific ones defined by the police commission, but I would love to have them all. I'd like to put every single piece of, of uh, body camera I've got online, except uh, there are rules that permit me for, that prevent me from doing so, like witnesses and juveniles and privacy and et cetera. But um, the, the notion here is that it, uh, I, I do want that summit to have the, the community answer certain questions, but there are certain parts of that recommendation that can't be, uh, that really can't be done. I would just like to say that, um, in executive session, the police commission has given a number of ideas and uh, responses of, of how to consider doing certain things differently when an officer is not in harm's way. And we have been at times, to my great frustration, dismissed. Uh, we have also been refused um, looking at body cam footage. And that is still an open issue. So I just like to offer those clarifications. Thank you. Uh, so when it comes to this issue, um, I you know, I, what I gather from what you said is that, um, a lot of this, the, you know, in Jabu, actually, did you want to add something? I know you had had your hands up. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's all good. My hand was raised. Um, pretty much the chief said, um, a lot of what I was going to say, uh, that, yeah, we do review, uh, sorry, uh, we do get a report of every use of force incident every month, uh, as opposed to board docs, we review it. One said, um, stick out to us we asked to review um i don't know how to better get that hit get, get that in the hands of the public um but yeah it's it's there so i think the i think that you know listen we all struggle with this i i i i i understand where you're coming from because we there are plenty of things that as city councilors we know are available. We try our best to make sure that the public knows that they're available, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody knows where to look. And um, so, you know, I, I think from, from a community education point of view that, you know, whatever can be done to, um, you know, to, to, to make that more available um, I think would be a good thing. I'm not really quite sure how to word that. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's right. Did you have something or I can't remember now if you had something that you thought made, made sense. I mean, I put the same thing that we have. I mean, I, this is where I now put what I had had on 1.8.1, which is just that PC is to review it annually engage the, I don't want to give too many things on what you all have to do, but to engage the community as applicable and provide recommendations to the state as applicable on. And then I think, I mean, I could add, which I don't think we need to, but it's possible, you know, that we, you know, it's a floor and we could do different policies, but I almost feel like advocating for them on a state level is maybe more applicable, which is why I didn't change okay. it. So I don't right. know what folks' feelings um, are on that, but that's what I have right now. It's also part of um, public engagement as well. So it's another part of a overlap with um, yeah. on the, the Talitha side and what people were expressing. And also what I know one of the main reasons that I joined the commission was the the lack of public engagement. And, and it is a really big, um, I think it's a really big part of it. I think that um, the department and commission, there needs to be more done to educate the public 
as to what they need to expect, right? And what the officers need. Um, what what is it that the officers need from the public to effectively do their jobs and to protect the public? Like the, the department doesn't do enough of that. So I kind of I, I kind of put it under all that category. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with you. I mean, I think whatever we can do, one of the things that I'm hopeful, not that this has sort of an editorial comment, but one of the things I am hopeful for is that um, in the not too distant future, we will be able to move forward with the um, PIO that the mayor had requested as one of his um, uh, priorities for wanting to see the the police department have a public information officer simply simpler, similar to the public information officer. They have a DPW, which I think has been extremely successful. Um, but in the interim, I, I would go with the recommendation that we've sort of got. It um, doesn't sound like there's any objection to that. Um, I don't know if this is something that we can do in a in fairly short order. Um, and you'll have to tell me, Chief, if this isn't the items that are um, the items that are number one point one five, one six, one seven, and one eight appear to be directive reviews or mission statement reviews. They they don't sound that time consuming. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe you can maybe just take the first two or something and see how we go as we're almost at, at 7.30, if these are things that we could um, prioritize um, maybe into the second quarter um, or how you would feel about, you know, the, the amount of time that's necessary to affect these. I'm sorry, did you say 1.15.1 and then others? Cause I only see the one. Yeah, there's 1.15, 1.16. Oh, okay. Those were uh, I all, see. I see. I, I apologize. All, John, they, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, they're not all mission statements. Those are no, 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 no. I understand that. I'm just saying one of them. They're e they're either they're fairly administrative directive reviews, and then of course the first one is a mission statement review. So I'm just wondering how some of them appear to be. You know, like Zariah noted that the first one it, it appears to be a quick win as it stands, but you didn't put it in that. So I'm wondering, is it more complicated than we know? I, I think uh, a mission statement is gonna be more complicated. I have a mission statement that I would put on the wall immediately and uh, make the mission statement of this organization. Um, I've said it numerous times in public, but what this is suggesting uh, is, you know, what I basically included is something a little more complicated, which is stakeholder input and, and figuring uh -huh. it out. Uh, and that would take more time. Who are the stakeholders? How many? I think a lot of the processes that we're outlining are admirable and are, uh, are really wonderful. And I think they are going to be incredibly time consuming with regard to having a lot of people weigh in on, on these ideas. Um, we're talking over ideas and not actually doing anything with regard to the ideas where we're, we're ranking and, and assigning and there's work getting done, but not the work of it. And, and that is, each one of these things is going to be very time consuming. Um, I, I, uh, I'd love to give some mission statement concepts to a, a, a group and try to get a new one. Uh, I think ours is out of date. Um, I, I also think that, for example, uh, the... Uh, the code of ethics uh, using uh, the IACP's new version, not uh, not a challenge. That could be, we can find that and insert that. That could be a relatively quick edit in DD01. Um, the the one after that, 17.1, is much more complicated. Again, DD40 is going to be a really difficult redraft. It should be at least two parts, one for internal and one for external complaints. It, it's going to have to talk about a system that we don't fully have up yet. It's going to have to have uh, a, a lot of, of different questions about investigations and what our staffing is to conduct those investigations right now. There's a lot to it. So, so that one's really long, um, which is partly why it's a two, uh, because I, I think it's just where I don't believe that, I, that we're prepared to, to undertake something that rigorous at this moment. We, we 
we don't have enough resources to undertake it. But okay. the other two, um, that, that's my, I, I'm sorry, that's my answer. No, 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 that's okay. I mean, so it, it sounds to me like 1.17 and 1.18 are similar to the others that relate to DD40, which is that they are going to take a fair amount of time and um, probably should be grouped together, um, whatever it was that we put on the other one. Well, I know in one of them, we, we put that, you know, Shireen was working on that. I think it, it probably, it might be something we have to come back to. As far as the others, um, it sounds like 1.16 is a fairly, a fairly quick fix. Um, and then 1.15, um, I don't know, Zariah, that could be something where, you know, we, we enlist the help of the commission to work with the department on a mission statement. Um, that we could also work on with them, the public safety committee as well. The only, yeah, the only thing I'll say in terms of how I had ranked things, because I think other people ranked those as similar priorities, yeah. is um, for me, I felt like 1.17.1 1. um, was a little bit more integral just in terms of like actually setting up clarity on how those things are done, whereas you know, I feel like some things like the mission and value statement are, it sounds like, you know, something that the chief would like to do and worth prioritizing for that. But um, whereas 1.17.1 1. in terms of some of the other things in terms of we're already getting complaints and like, how are we handling those? It just feels like that's an ongoing need that we're not addressing. So I would address, I would prioritize that one differently than the other ones. All right. So, so maybe even though they're, yeah, so not ahead. just put it, not just making it about how easily things are done, but actually prioritizing it, I think, by what. Okay. So um, as far as the mission statement, would that be something that would be more um, perhaps next year? Is, does that seem in line with what you were saying, Chief? Um. It could. It, it also. It all depends on the process of it. If 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 getting a new mission statement, for example, is is the goal, I can draft a new mission statement and have it vetted internally so that there's stakeholder buy-in inside and bring it to the police commission. Um, we could do that. You know, also by the next session. Uh, I have one. I I think that the agency would accept it. The question is whether or not there has to be more. You know, how many more hands have to go into the pot, and how many more cooks are going to work on that. And so um, that really is, that's gonna be the crux of a lot of these, the timeline questions for these things. How many people are gonna be involved ultimately? Because if, if the question is, the, as I mentioned in the previous meeting, the, the way that this was previously done uh, was in its own way, a little bit uh, time consuming and sometimes even um, uh, I think complicated in a level to a way that, that made it not something that was done. I think a component of why former Chief Del Pozo really didn't do any directive review during his time was the, the challenge of bringing it forward um, and, and having it worked on in, in, that, fun, in that way. Uh, and I don't, I don't know for sure what, ch how Chief Sherling was able to do as many review. He rewrote a huge number of them in a relatively short time frame, where most of our directives, uh, many of our directives still date back to that time frame. Um, the, the couple that I've had to, to redo, the first one, uh, which was done with the police commission back in, I wanna say 2019, the very uh, the mid of 2019, went very, very well. We brought it to them. I worked, I convened an internal working group. It was about uniforms. It's DDO2, DDO2 part one and part two. Uh, convened internal working groups, got all the input we needed for uniforms and equipment, worked with vendors to talk about it, did interior internal surveys, brought it to the police commission, the police commission looked it over, made one or two tweaks, asked some questions about parts of it, and then approved it. That was a, a relatively uh, straightforward process. I don't know exactly how this process going, is going to work, but I do know that we're talking about involving a lot more hands, and, uh, and that's going to take a lot more time. So, so that's why I, I can't quite estimate how long things will take. In one way, uh, I, I could get it to you by the next police. I could have a mission statement ready by the next police commission meeting. Um, 
but not one that has the, the level of public vetting that I think some of these discussions have talked about for other recommendations. And right, and the, I mean, the recommendation just says to include it, so it's not even necessarily the direct recommendation. Um, and and it sounds like you're just saying it doesn't make sense to do, the, to do that until it's updated because ours is outdated. Um, I think it's, I mean, go ahead. No, I no, I mean, I, I, I guess, when I, mine with with regard to stakeholder input, maybe I am I and I apologize if I'm doing this. Maybe I'm sort of pre presuming the the level of of input for this that you that the the group has described for others, uh, for other recommendations that have been discussed. If this follows the standard that I just outlined, and that is what I meant when I said with stakeholder input, um, and also said that it, why it was a number one priority. Uh, if I do if it's an internal stakeholder review. And then bringing it to the police commission for their imprimatur, uh, that could be done. Certainly, it could be presented to the police commission by the next meeting, whether it gets approved or not, and how we work on it. Again, in the complicating uh, factor of, of open meeting law and, and you know who works on it or not, I can't talk about it at, after that point. But I can yeah, easily so you, do that for the next meeting. You 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 say I complete. I understood that from the first thing that you said. Um, my question was is. We, the recommendation itself is just saying, right, put the mission statement and value statement in the directive. I guess it sounds like we have one, it is just outdated. So I'm saying there is a timeline of saying, do we just not even do put the old one in? And that's what you're saying. And then of course, then if we're saying we're not gonna put the old one in, that creates a longer timeline. I feel fine about that being year two and letting you figure out the timeline that makes the most sense for you for what that looks like. I would agree with that. Um, is, does anyone else have any in input on that? Okay. Um, so yeah, we would add that in year two, Zariah. Um, it's 739. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll stop here and go into 1.16 point one um, at the next meeting. Um, the good news is that we've made it a third of the way. The other good news is that most of the other sections are much, much smaller. Um, some of them are five or six or 10 or 12 recommendations. So we're doing the, we're definitely doing the hardest section first um, or the, or at least the, um, uh, the most recommendation heavy one first. Um, uh, we'll try to get at least a third of the way, another third of the way with the next meeting. Um, the other, the other good news is that, um, for those who have already completed it, if you're, if you want to add anything to your recommendations or notes or responses, you can do that before the next meeting. Um, and we'll hope that, um, we can get, um, some responses at least, at least going forward from Zariah, um, We'll try to get, or no, it's right from Jane. We'll try to integrate uh, Milos that we already have. And, um, and Isaac, if you do have recommendations that you're able to get to us by the next meeting, um, you know, of course we would welcome them um, if you're able. Uh, so I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'll send this to just Jared, just in case, um, and then he can post it or not, just so that we're keeping it public or not at all. Um, and then I think just, I mean, I think we had some helpful discussion here, but like, I do think it would be helpful if people kept their comments just a little bit shorter because on each one to have this much discussion, I think we're gonna get very tired if we do this week after week. So I think if people, could keep it a little shorter so that we can really try to get through the recommendations. Um, remember, we're just trying, like right now we're still, our goal is to get to a timeline. So prioritizing with a time and then having some, your, your, your comments will be included in the sheet no matter what. So people can put their individual comments, but then having some summary of what we think should happen um, as a group, as well as the individual comments, which is why we have the individual comments. And then if, people can just keep their comments short verbally. I think that'll really help us get through, through all the recommendations. I would agree. I would agree. Um, you know, if you, if you, 
if there's a comment that sort of is an overriding issue for you and you've said it once, um, it would be it would be great if we could just sort of all try to, you know, just sort of self monitor. Um, thank you all very, very much. Um, enjoy what's left of this evening <laughs> and um, take it easy after what was a long evening last night. And uh, um, I think we had agreed. The one thing I did want to mention is that um, the police commission meeting that is on the 22nd, um, I know that I'd heard from one of your colleagues that it's really hard to have a meeting at 730. So um, we had sort of compromised instead of starting this meeting so that you could start at 730, that we would start a little bit earlier. So I'm hopeful that we can all start at a little bit earlier than 530, maybe 515 or so. Um, but that we can discuss at next week's meeting. So um, with that said, I think we're, I think we're done. Um, and unless there's an objection, uh, which I seriously doubt there is, um, we will be uh, we'll be adjourned at 740, 743. And uh, and thank you all for your time. Absolutely. <clears throat> Have a great evening. Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Take care. Take care. Thank Good you. night. Good night. <laughs>